Sugar the Play, a cash team production, is looking for actors and singers to fill several slots for this upcoming live play. For more information, please call 216-394-8926. That's Sugar the Play, auditions at 216-394-8926. Hey, good morning. Uh, good morning out there and welcome to Talk Back Live. Today is December the 11th and we have two special guests on with us, two of my very special guests, all the way from Virginia Live and they are from the Gloria, Greg and Jack Sports Chat Show. Welcome Gregory Powell and welcome Jack Jones. We're going to talk sports today. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure, go to the uh, Gloria, Greg, and Jack Sports Chat Show, or even on uh, our own Talkback Facebook page. Leave your comment and your questions for us today. We're going to have some fun today, and we're going to talk sports, okay? I've got two experts with us. Hi, Gregory Powell. How are you today? Hey, how y'all doing? Just excited. It's a good day to be on the show. My daughter's graduating, so I got a lot of good things going on today. Awesome. And good morning to you, Jack Jones. Good morning. How are you? I How am excellent. Good to have you guys with me today. I don't get it often. I don't get a chance very often to have you two on Talk Back Live. So this is closing out the year's show. And I'm very excited to have you guys on. Two of my uh, favorite men in all the world. I want to give a shout out to my producer, Keith Hayes, who's in the booth. Uh, standing by and he's producing the show today as always good to have you again with me Keith okay guys we're going to jump right in we're going to talk sports today again we will take your questions and or your comments so don't be shy be sure and write your questions or your comments on into uh, the chat line okay all right so let's jump in guys you're in Virginia I'm in Cleveland um, so we've got some really exciting games coming up this weekend the NFL uh, actually changed the number of games to be played starting this year. There's 17 total games to be played, and we are in week 14, this coming up this Sunday. So tell us, let's talk about, let's start with the top five teams or the top teams that you think are really the teams to be looking out for, guys. Let's start with you, Jackie. Go right on in. Well, I'm biased, so, you know, I'm a Cowboy <laughs> fan, and uh, I'm looking forward to the Cowboys and the Washington football team game this weekend. I feel like um, the Cowboys going to ride down to D.C. or Maryland and, and come back with a win. You think they're going to take care of business today, huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> no need to ask you that, Jack. We know. We know you're up. Uh, very faithful Cowboys fan, have been for years. But what other teams, though, do you think are really going to, are the ones to really be uh, looking out for, especially this week? I mean, week we're in week 14, and we've got some games coming up. Not only are your Cowboys playing uh, the Washington football team, but some other games are coming up. We've got the Chiefs uh, playing the Raiders uh, on Sunday. Uh, that's uh, everyone's expecting the Chiefs, their favorite in this game, to win this game. What are your thoughts on that game? Well, the Chiefs are finally um, playing a little better. 
than they have been. Their defense has stepped up. I think the Chiefs' offense is still not where it needs to be. Um, they make too many turnovers and too many mistakes. And actually, the defense is better than the offense right now. Right. Okay. But the defense have had some trouble. They've kind of gotten it together here lately, the defense there in Kansas City, because they were a little suspect just a few short weeks ago. Well, ultimately, I think uh, Mahomes, you know, now's the time of the year to be gelling. So these last three games of the year is going to really paint a picture for us. Um, it's no clear-cut favorites this year. That's that's the good thing about it. That's going to make everything exciting. When you ask the question, I was trying to think, who is a clear-cut favorite that looks better than everybody else? But it's not one this year. So I think that's going to make the uh, end of the season, these last three games, real important that people jockey for position um, for playoff contention. But everybody has a chance that, will make the playoffs. I think teams are underrated. I think the Chargers will make a run for for whatever reason. I like their team along with the defense. I think, of course, Tom Brady and and the Bucs, you can't count them out. But you know who I'm really surprised at is New England with Belichick. You know, that's an exciting story for me because last year when – Tom Brady won the Super Bowl. Everybody kept saying it was Tom Brady. It was Tom Brady. But the other night with Belichick just completely running the ball, and like Jack said on the sports chat page, even when the Bills knew they were going to run the ball, still couldn't stop them. I think uh, their offensive coordinator did, did a great job, and they found some weaknesses in the Bills' defense, and they exploited them. So you can never count out Belichick. Right, never count him out. What a masterful game they played against the Bills uh, the other night. Masterful game, and the offensive coordinator deserves some credit as well. Bill Belichick, of course, we're used to him coaching just great games, but the offensive coordinator there at New England really outlined and he really outlaid uh, Belichick's plan for that game. Just a, just a masterful coached game there um everyone's talking about of course tampa bay they're talking about the patriots arizona doesn't get a lot of uh public praises i was murray's back this guy is 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 like he never left what are you what are you guys thoughts on that on arizona i was i was just um thinking about arizona the cardinals they have a good team and since uh, Kyler Murray's been back, you know, he's he's like Mighty Mouse. I mean, he's hard to tackle, and he can throw that ball. And Arizona has a great team. But the thing about it, as soon as we pick a team that's going, you know, we think are going to be the number one team, they lose. And like Greg said, it's wide open. Anybody out there can probably get to the Super Bowl this year. You think anybody? It's amazing. Yeah, it's Anybody amazing that's how, in the playoffs. Yep. It's amazing how um, teams have made runs. And like Jack say, as soon as we tag them as the best team in the league, then they fall off and, and you see some openings and stuff. Just like the beginning of the years, as much as I'm not a Cowboys fan, just the opposite from Jack, you know, they look like, good gracious, they're going to win it all this year. And then they fell off. And then, uh, like you said, the Cardinals have been – you know, playing good, but because I think it's because of the Cardinals history, you know, none of us are jumping on the bandwagon with them yet. And that's based on their past, not based on how they plan the day. Well, Kyler Murray's playing well after coming back from the injury, their offense is explosive. Their defense is, I guess, you, you know, I wouldn't rate it a 10 out of 10, but they, they seem to hold good up D, and though. win. They're playing, they playing decent deep. They playing enough that uh, Kyler Murray and the offense can outscore the other team, and that's all that's important. Exactly, exactly. So the Packers um, is uh, still in the hunt of things. They're in the thick of everything. Uh, what do you guys think of the Green Bay Packers this year? They're always I think in the they, thick of things. <laughs> exactly. I think they can win on any given Sunday. You know, you just can't. 
you can't count them out. It, it, it's going to be interesting to see. The one thing that anybody in the NFC better hope for is that the the, the playoff doesn't have to go through Green Bay. You know, exactly. It, 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 if if they don't have to go through Green Bay, you got a good chance in beating the Packers. But if it goes through the frozen tundra, it's a different story altogether. I agree. You know, I, I, I don't like Green Bay, but for some reason, <laughs> it doesn't matter who, who get hurts on Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers always find a way to win. I mean, yep. other teams have injuries. And it seems like they fall off a little bit. But with Green Bay, it seems like they just keep rolling. And like Greg said, if they get home field advantage, you know, that's going to be a tough out going through Green Bay. Yeah. Is Aaron Rodgers up for the job, though? I mean, the last few years they, they've made it. And then he, you know, he got disappointed there with the against uh, Brady and the back Buccaneers. Uh, he lost. Is he up for the job but this year? I think he is. But that's not, you know, when they lost last year, other than that last play when I think Aaron Rodgers could have made a different decision, it hadn't been because of him. You know, uh, their defense uh, the last couple of years has given up more points than they normally would. But it normally isn't that they lose because of the play of Rodgers. You know, uh, he's going to do his thing, you know. And if it's, a, if it's a close game and it's going into the last drive, I'll put my money on Aaron Rodgers. Okay. All right. All right. You're listening and you're viewing Talk Back Live with two special guests. That's Gregory Powell and uh, Mr. Jack Jones from the Sports Page Show that's just booming right now on Facebook page. Be sure if you're not a member, uh, you can join. We'd love to have you. We're close to 1,000 members now. That's the Gloria, Greg and Jack Sports Chat Show on Facebook. Be sure and join us with us uh, each and every day. We've got exciting sports news that we share with you. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about sports. I think we're getting close to a break right now. So we're, oh, okay, so we can go on. I just told my producer we can go on. Okay, let me ask you this, guys, because we can't have this conversation without talking. We did a bit about New England, the Patriots, right? This team is has been noted as the most scariest team in the NFL right now. They're clicking on all cylinders. My producer is Hales from Massachusetts. He's their number one fan, and I'm sure he's dying to chime in here. Uh, and say something about those Patriots. But this team is clicking on every cylinder defensively. They've got a great running game now. Their, their young uh, rookie quarterback, Mac Jones, is playing to the top of his level, if that's even possible for a rookie. What's going on here with the New England Patriots? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It absolutely has to be coaching. You know, they have a great team, but they have one heck of a coaching staff. When you mention Mac Jones, he doesn't have to do anything outside of managing the game. So he doesn't have to be great. He just has to not mess the game up. He, he just has to not turn the ball over. What a lot of people forgot about was last year, the defensive defense had eight or nine guys that were that chose not to play because of COVID. All of those, and they were stars, and all those guys came back. So their defense has risen to the level of a year and a half ago. So you, I expected that, but I didn't expect Mac Jones to have so much command and control over the offense. And Belichick always puts those teams in position to do just enough to win. And uh, I, I'm just amazed at his coaching capabilities. Jack, comments on that? Uh, yes, New England this offseason went out and spent a whole lot of money. They did. You know, they got a couple of tight ends, and they solidified their offense surrounded by tight ends. That's how Belichick run his offense. You know, he runs a lot, and uh, he has his tight ends to block. And uh, Belichick is smart. You might not like him, but you got to love the way he coaches. His teams are always disciplined. They never fumble. They seem to never turn the ball over. 
And to me, honestly, I don't even know these guys that's running the ball. I never heard of them until this year. So right. um, he's doing it with no name people. As right. well he's as always done veterans. That. He's always done that. You know, that's why they don't have to be slave to anybody who want a big contract extension because Belichick just plugs in the right type of player. He wants a tight player, not a named player. You know, some people have big names and, and in free agents and people go out and get them. Belichick just has uh, signs people with certain qualities that fit in with what he's trying to accomplish. Absolutely. And nobody does it better. No one does it better than him. Okay, so I've got my pick for the sleepers team. You know, the sleepers that, that could sneak in there and surprise everybody. Uh, my number one sleeper is the, are the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, nope. Baltimore, too many injuries right now. And they put all their eggs in one basket, meaning, you know, Lamar Jackson. You know, he can't keep running the ball like that and throwing the ball, being a quarterback. Sooner or later, he's going to get hurt. Um, I don't think Baltimore are going to make the playoffs. Gotcha. Gotcha. Ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a heavy statement, not make the playoffs. <laughs> I think I, – and, and it's possible, Jack. Uh, but I, I think you're on point with um, their style has to be Lamar running the ball close to 100 yards. Now, I don't mind that because if he passes for 150 and he runs for 100, that's 250 yards. I don't care how people look at it. However, the injury thing may come up, but just like when they missed that two-point conversion, Lamar will make some great passes, but people don't count the times where he's missed the throw that would have been for a score. He did that a couple of times in the last game. He had a receiver uh, open close to the goal line, and, and it seemed like such a simple throw, and he overthrew him, and that would have been six more points. So sometimes when the games are close, we don't miss the, we don't think about the plays throughout the game that they missed, that the score wouldn't have been as close as it is down the stretch. And then they have to always have a last drive or something. They've won most of their games by less than um, less than a touchdown, you know. Right. And, and a lot of uh, I think four or five of them been on the last drive, you know. So that's a recipe, not the whole firm in the playoffs. Gotcha. Good, good, good stuff, guys. Okay, we're going to take a break right now and we're going to see you on the other side. Stay tuned. I'm here at the scene of tomorrow's shooting where a 15-year-old will kill four children, two adults, and then turn the gun on himself. When the shooting starts happening tomorrow, first I'll probably just think it's firecrackers or a car backfiring or something. He told some of us that his dad kept a gun in his closet and he always talked about using it on, you know, the people that bullied him. Tomorrow I'll probably say that I wish I told someone. You know, after the shooting we're gonna feel pretty bad about picking on him, but until then we'll probably just keep doing it because he's pretty weird. Uh, tomorrow I'll probably point out that something has seemed off with him since the beginning of the school year. And I'm now joined by the officers who will be the first responders tomorrow. What additional details can you share with us? Well, someone is expected to tell us after the shooting that the shooter has been posting on social media about doing this for weeks. So how will you explain the shooting to your daughter? Actually, I won't get to explain it to her because she won't make it. This is Christine Lynn reporting from the scene of another shooting. We'll say we never saw coming.
Hey, welcome back to Talk Back Live. And I've got two special guests, two of my favorite men in the whole wide world. I have Gregory Powell with me, which is a co-host on a sports show on Facebook. And I have uh, Jack Jones, who is also uh, one of the uh, co-creators of the Gloria Greg and Jack Sports Chat Show. Be sure to go in and uh, leave us comments or questions. I did get a few comments here I want to go over. Uh, Irving Smith, who is a regular on the sports chat. What's up, homies? He's saying to Greg and Jack. And uh, he also said, yes, sir. Good point. I don't know who he was speaking and referring to, Jack or Greg. And Irving is saying Baltimore will be in. So we'll see. The thing about Baltimore, I think they have a lot of flaws. I really do. I mean, I think that uh, this is proving ground. This year should be proving ground mm. for their quarterback. I think uh, he's been in the league, what, four years now, just like Baker Mayfield. He's yet to really uh, advance in the post. I think this is his proven ground, but I don't think he's got the team uh, that he's going to need to do that. But I think they're a sleeper because they have, they live on the edge, you know, guys. And I think that's why I named him a sleeper. And then you, I like to hear you guys uh, list of your sleepers, the Buffalo Bills. I had these guys pick to be in the post guaranteed now i'm listing them as a sleeper what do you guys think of the buffalo bills i think the bills are helter skelter as they come you know they um they took a step backwards to me they took a step backwards this year and you know don't y'all laugh at me about this one okay all right <laughs> jack I don't want to hear nothing from you on this one. <laughs> but I swear my Saints still have an outside chance. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are, that they is have funny. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have disappointed me so far this year. And I think, you know, when Jameis Winston went out, you know, it was a downfall from a Back to your point on the Bills. Again, I think the last three weeks of the season is going to show – people who everybody is just not just not the bills but your team the browns you know everybody <laughs> is gonna you know show who they really are these last three because these games these next three games are nothing to play about i mean it can play put people in playoff contention and it certainly can knock some people out yeah okay, uh, okay. what do you think jack well First of all, the Saints ain't going to make it because they don't have a quarterback. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they got That's Taysom true. Hill pretending to be a quarterback. Right. Also, the Bills are the Bills. You know, they like what a lot of people say about the Cowboys. They reel you in, you thinking good, and then all of a sudden, they let you down. Um, they got a good, great quarterback but they seem to not be able to put everything together. Um, they'll get in the playoffs, but they won't go far. I don't think they could beat the Chiefs. And um, Cleveland, to me, is a sleeper. If they play their game, if they can get Baker to manage the game, because Cleveland has more talent than anybody else out there. You and don't have to tell Cleveland, me. Cleveland can win it all. All they have to do is manage the game and not make those crucial turnovers. Yeah, I think with Cleveland and, of course, the Browns are my team um, here because Cleveland is my home. I think, though, that the thing with Cleveland, they've got the talent. They had the talent last year. They've got the talent. They got great dual running backs and Kareem Hunt and uh, and Chubb. They've got, you know, they've got a some pretty good wide receivers. They got that one tight end, I think is out for this, uh, this Sunday's game, but they've got good tight ends. They've got a great offensive line. They've improved their offensive line every single year. They've got a great offensive line. Baker, if he could manage the game, yes. I think you know what, with though? my team, it's the mental mistakes. I think it's the nervousness being on the stage. I think it's, it's, it, that's what it comes down to me is can they you handle the big stage? You know what I'm shocked at about Cleveland? Two things that's been a big turnaround with my thoughts about Cleveland, Gloria. One is I'm going back to saying that you're, you're right. Me and Jack, 
me and Jack uh, kept telling you all Baker had to do was manage the game, manage right, the game. Right, right. Because right. Cause we told you that at the beginning of the year, and you kept right. saying, no, he's got to do more, he's got to do more. And now, I, you know, I flipped my stance on that. I think you're right. He has to do more. And the reason being is because I, Jack and I, when we were saying that, and I can't speak for Jack, but I thought their defense was so, so tough that the defense could carry him, and all he needed to do was score 20 points. But the defense has been giving up 30 Too many points. points a game. Too many points. So if they're going to give up that many points, then Baker has to be more than a game manager. Absolutely. Absolutely. Baker has to do more and the defense has to step up and do more because they can't play tit for tat with these points. I don't know if Baker is that, if he can pull a uh, genie out of the bottle. I, I just don't know that. I, well, my other some, sleeper, go ahead, Jack. Well, sometimes the defense get caught up in the fact that the offense is going three and out every time. Mm-hmm. So the exactly. defense That's is true. on the field so much that right. they get That's burned. True. Yeah, yeah I but agree. they they had a lot of games where you know they were down twenty one nothing, you know, right out the gate. But your point is well taken. Sometimes the defense will um, get absolutely uh, overworked, but yeah, overworked. But, and that, but that's but on any, any team, any NFL team. If the defense left out on that field too long. They're overworked. That's any team. So. I don't I don't give my team a pass because they're my team. I just I don't do that when when I think they play exceptional on both ends. I give them the credit when I think they can play better. I think then I say I think they can play better. Hey, but you know who's going to win that division, right? The real sleeper of it all, the Bengals. (laughs) The Bengals Bengals are going to win that because the Steelers. The Steelers are actually absolutely some trash right now. And I don't mean that they're not capable, but, you know, just like, like dude, uh, you know, he was celebrating and stuff. They are making mental mistakes that's unlike uh, a Tomlin team. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead, Jack. Uh, up towards the graduation. Uh, I still got a little bit. I was hoping we'd get to some basketball so I could brag about my dubs. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, before we let you go, Greg, and I know you got to get to your gra- daughter's graduation. By the way, congratulations on that. The biggest sports story in basketball is Steph Curry and the Warriors. Steph Curry specifically. I mean, the guy's playing lights out. Well, yeah, Steph- what can I say? <laughs> what can I say? You know, and, I, and I've got to say this to both of y'all because this is my chance to get back. I was waiting to get up here and do this. A year and a half ago, Gloria and Jack told me when Durant left, the dubs were done. That's what I got from y'all. Right, Jack? Didn't you tell me that? <laughs> yeah, right, I thought the dubs were done then. They were <laughs> done. <laughs> no, you told me they were done. They weren't going to be able to rebuild and come back. But I mean, I want to say this one thing about Steph, man. We talk about all the goats and all of those things. I was just, you know, and, and, and Jack and I, we're sports fans, so it doesn't matter who's winning. We're going to call it like we see it, and you do that as well, Gloria. Um, the one thing that I've watched closely as I've watched, you know, I'm streaming there, so I watch all of their games. Steph Curry changes the game in ways that it doesn't go down in a stat sheet. When he come, brings the ball up, it, it was several times in the games that I've been watching, when he crossed half court, it's almost three people watching him. And Andrew Wiggins said something profound the other day. He said, in my whole NBA career, I have never been this open. KD said the same thing when um, when he played for him. He spaces the floor so much. Jordan didn't do that. LeBron doesn't do that. All of the people we put in the GOAT conversations, none of them space the floor the way that uh, Steph Curry does. And because of his shooting skills from so far out, even if he has an off night, he's so much of a threat to the defense has to adjust to him and the rest of the floor is wide open and Draymond Green Draymond Green is playing at a level 
um, that he has never played at before, too. So um, I think the Dubs, when I watch basketball now, the way they have ball movement, and I watched the Nets last night and versus ISO ball like the Lakers and stuff are doing, it's such a fun game to watch when you move the ball that way. I don't know what y'all think about it. I agree. We're well, we're I, running out of time. Go ahead, Jack. Real real quick, though. We really I, I running out of time. I agree with you, Greg. I agree with that. Um, Steph Curry has made Wiggins a better player. Steph exactly. Curry makes anybody on his team a better player because, like you said, uh, uh, with the spacing, um, I still think the Lakers can win a seven game series against anybody because you that, have to that, remember the game it. slows down. The game I'm gonna slows you. down. <laughs> I'm going to laugh at you just like you laughed at me about the Saints. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm you. I, I, was, I was hoping uh, Jack wouldn't bring that up. But uh, <laughs> anyhow, we're going to wrap it up. I just want to give a shout out to Katie Morton. She did say to give this to you, Greg. Tonight, my Sixers going to beat your Steph Curry. His brother Seth is going to contribute <laughs> to that. I want to thank Irving Smith for chiming in for uh into talk back live today with my special guests gregory powell and jack jones i want to thank you for tuning in this is our last show for the year we've got some exciting guests coming up for you in the new year of 2022 so be sure hang tight with us ride continue on this ride with us stay on this train we're going to have some exciting guests coming up in the brand new year be sure and look out for sugar the stage play that's going to be coming to the city of cleveland uh, in the year of 2022 and if you are an actor actress experience or even non-experienced maybe you're a diamond in the rough be sure give us a call at 216-394-8926 that's 216- 3948926 to two of my favorite men in the whole wide world. I want to say thank you for spending your precious time with me today here on Talk Back Live. Enjoyed you guys. Uh, it was well, a good right. show. We just didn't have enough time. We got to do it again. Yes, we yep. do. We got to do it again. And uh, kudos and congratulations, Gregory Powell, to your daughter for uh, graduating. Actually, I think she did graduate early, but because of COVID, she couldn't walk across the stage and right. get her uh, her degree so she's doing that today congratulations to her nita Powell. i want to say yeah, kudos and so good to see you thank you for uh giving your thumbs up to talk back live into the sports chat show to my producer none other than keith days nobody like him i got the best producer in the world baby thank you keith and you guys have thank a wonderful you, saturday enjoy your thank weekend you. Thank you, guys, and thank you for tuning in. Until next time, America, have a good one. That's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed the show today. Be sure and go to our Facebook page, Talk Back, a thought-provoking talk format. That's Talk Back, a thought-provoking talk format. Leave us a review. Let us know what you think of Talk Back. It can only make us better. Be sure to check us out on Spotify. Also, Twitter, Anchor. Apple Podcasts, wherever podcasts are heard. Be sure, check us out on YouTube. Again, thank you for listening. Until next time, America. You have been listening to Talk Back with my grandma on Spotify. Be sure and catch her every weekend. Oh, and by the way, my name is Kari. Bye. <laughs>